Maybe Agent Mulder was right. The truth really is out there. To the delight of conspiracy theorists everywhere, the FBI recently declassified some X-Files that contain details of alleged UFO sightings. One document, in fact, from 1949, describes the account of three men who swear they saw a UFO crashing in Salt Lake City. Another memo has a report from an agent describing evidence found of aliens landing in, well, where else? Roswell, New Mexico. It's called The Vault, the FBI's digital reading room where any of us can go online and view the Bureau's most notorious cases. The memo's all of two paragraphs. Agent Guy Hoddle, then head of the FBI's Washington field office, writes that an Air Force investigator stated that three so-called flying saucers had been recovered in New Mexico. They were described as being circular in shape with raised centers, approximately 50 feet in diameter. Not only that, each one was occupied by three bodies of human shape, but only three feet tall, dressed in metallic cloth of a very fine texture. Each body was bandaged in a manner similar to the blackout suits used by speed flyers and test pilots. John Fox is the FBI's historian. This was never followed up on, right? No. In fact, it says right here, no further evaluation was attempted concerning the above. Why not? Um, from what's written here, uh, from what we can read, it certainly looks like they thought that this was you know, third-hand information, that this was not necessarily a hoax, which it could well have been, but that you know, someone was simply reporting hearsay. And it was more for the Air Force to look into, along with countless other reports of UFOs in Roswell, New Mexico and elsewhere, reports that were never substantiated. One reason the memo from Agent Hoddle went viral is because when the FBI vault was set up online two years ago, tabloids seized on that memo, saying it appeared to back up theories that aliens exist. The most interesting memo that the mainstream media failed to report is this memo. This memo has a location of San Diego, California with the date of July 8, 1947. A memorandum of importance. So this is an important document. The way the memo starts, this memorandum is respectfully addressed to certain scientists of distinction, to important aeronautical and military authorities, to a number of public officials, and to a four publications. So this memo was sent out to various different entities during that time. It is unclear who the actual writer of the document is. Nevertheless, let's continue reading. The writer has little expectation that anything of import will be accomplished by this gesture. The more fact that the data herein were obtained by so-called supernatural means is probably sufficient to ensure its disregard by nearly all the persons addressed. Nevertheless, it seems a public duty to make it available. The present writer has several university degrees and was formerly a university department head. So. The agent who wrote this, or whoever wrote this, within the government, knew that nobody will believe him, but he thought that it was his duty to disclose this. He also mentioned that the original author of this information actually has several university degrees and was a uh, department head formerly. Let's continue further reading. A very serious situation may develop at any time with regard to the flying saucers. If one of these should be attacked, the attacking plane will almost certainly be destroyed. So now it's important why the writer thinks that this should be hidden from the public. So uh, moving on. In the public mind, this might create near panic and international suspicion. The principal data concerning this craft is now at hand and must be offered, no matter how fantastic and unintelligible it may seem.
to minds not previously introduced in thinking of this type. So this must be a clue why uh, the writer thinks that this should be hidden uh, from the public uh, and might be a reason why this data was never publicly disclosed. Okay, let's move on. Part of the disc scary cruise, others are under remote control. Their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this plane. Okay, I want you to remember, it didn't say settling on this planet. It said settling on this plane. These visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. They are not excarnate Earth people. So they're saying, so this author is saying that they're not actually Earth people, but come from their own world. They do not come from any planet, as so use this word, but from an etheric planet, which interpenetrates with our own and is not perceptible to us. All right, that's a lot to digest. So they are not from planets as we think of planets, but rather from a different plane. And it, this plane interpenetrates our own. All right, now let's take a break from this document and let's look at uh, scripture and see if we find some clue as to what this document is pertaining to. What was Jinn created from? We have to think out of the box when we think of so-called extraterrestrial entities. When we think of life, we always think in terms of carbon-based life. However, that may not be the case in all parts of the universe. Life can be other known or unknown element-based in other planets of the universe. What might aliens look like? Nothing like us. Jinns are one such entity that is not carbon-based like human beings. The Quran tells us that they were not created the way human beings were created. Verily, we created men of porter's clay, of dark mud altered. And the jinn did we create aforetime of a smokeless flame of fire. Surah al hijr Verses 26, 27. And the jinn he did create of a smokeless flame of fire. Surah Al Rahman, verse 15. Those two verses confirm the fact that jinns were created from fire, but that does not mean they appear in the form of some blazing fire, just the way we human unlikely appear flesh and blood. Similarly, they do not appear in the form of fire. Same logic can be construed about the so-called aliens. They may not be carbon-based like us. They may be other element-based as such have different capabilities than human. Okay, let's go back to the declassified document. The bodies of the visitors and the craft also automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. So let's look at some of the 
words that have been used in this document. Number one, they are from a different plane, P-L-A-N-E, not planet. Their planet interpenetrates with our own. They are not perceptible to us. And the final one is that automatically materialize entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. So the word here vibratory. This is interesting and important because now it gets into our uh, theory of vibration or strings. So let us analyze all these words in light of science as well as scripture. Although this declassified document is from 1947, it does have something that actually was theorized in 1960s, which is the string theory. Uh, so this document has something that is quite phenomenal in terms of talking about a science that will come much later. Well, two planets reported an out-of-this-world sighting last month. They say they may have seen a UFO while flying over Arizona. But now the FAA is releasing audio of the incident. Listen to this. And it was anybody at the sun, uh, above us that passed us like 30 seconds ago. Negative. Okay. It's a UFO. All right, in a statement, the FAA said, quote, other than the brief conversation between two aircraft, the controller was unable to verify that any other aircraft was in the area. So we have a close working relationship with a number of other agencies and safely handled military aircraft and civilian aircraft of all types in that area every day, including high altitude weather balloons. What did the pilots actually see that the control tower couldn't see. More importantly, why couldn't the control tower see what the pilot saw? To understand that, we have to understand the signs of matters. So imagine we look at a familiar object just a candle in a holder. And imagine that we want to figure out what it is made of. So we go on a journey deep inside the object and examine the constituents. So deep inside, we all know you go sufficiently far down, you have atoms. We also all know that atoms are not the end of the story. They have little electrons that swarm around a central nucleus with neutrons and protons. Even the neutrons and protons have smaller particles inside of them known as quarks. That is where conventional ideas stop here is the new idea of string theory. Deep inside any of these particles, there is something else. The something else is this dancing filament of energy. It looks like a vibrating string. That's where the idea of string theory comes from. And just like the vibrating strings that you just saw on a cello can vibrate in different patterns, these can also vibrate in different patterns. They don't produce different musical notes, rather they produce the different particles making up the world around us. So if these ideas are correct, this is what the ultra-microscopic landscape of the universe looks like. It's built up of a huge number of these little tiny filaments of vibrating energy vibrating in different frequencies. The different frequencies produce the different particles. The different particles are responsible for all the richness in the world around us. And there you see unification because matter particles, electrons and quarks, radiation particles, photons, gravitons are all built up from one entity. So matter and the forces of nature all are put together under the rubric of vibrating strings and that's what we mean by a unified theory. Human eyes can only see a small portion of sun energy. This is called the visible spectrum. As it turns out, this makes up a large portion of the energy that makes it to the Earth's surface. Humans can see energy that range in wavelength from 380 nanometers to 700 nanometers. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. For example, a human hair is about 90,000 nanometers wide. 
Within the visible spectrum, we see different wavelengths as different colors. A rainbow is a perfect example of seeing different wavelengths as colors. Violets are the shortest wavelengths, followed by blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Red is the longest wavelengths of energy we can see. Energy the Earth sends back to space is in the form of longer wavelengths of energy. This energy is invisible to us because it's out of the visible spectrum. However, some creatures can see wavelengths that humans can't. For example, it's believed some spiders can see ultraviolet energy, which have very short wavelengths, while some reptiles can see infrared energy, which are much longer wavelengths of energy. So, whatever the pilot saw was within the visible spectrum of the pilots. However, somehow with technology, they stayed out of the spectrum of the control tower radar. Hence, the control tower never saw it. So, different vibrating streams can make different materials. In theory, then, it's possible that the orientation and the vibration of these streams can create two different realms existing in the same space and time, yet they are not directly interacting with each other. That may explain why we cannot see the jinn slash alien, although they are around us. Like the animals in our realm that can actually see beyond our visible spectrum, it's possible that the jinn alien can also see us, but we cannot see them. It's also possible that they can manipulate their string energy to go in and out from our realm to theirs and vice versa. It's also possible that they can manipulate the string vibration and send telepathy audio to our brain directly. Interestingly, Quran talks about a strange non-human beings called jinns. They seem to have a lot of similarity with modern-day concept of aliens. For example, they can see us, but we don't see them. They are able to travel to the edge of the universe. They are shape-shifters, and many other things they do are uncannily similar to what we are contemplating the alien would be. The Elba Pentagon has confirmed the existence of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, a $22 million initiative that studied UFOs for at least five years, beginning in 2007, and they released video, including a 2004 encounter when two fighter jets chased an oval-shaped white object near San Diego. They also released a second video with cockpit audio as pilots describe what they're seeing. Lo, he, Iblis or Satan, sees you. He and his tribe, evil jinn and demons, from whence you see him not. Surah Al-Araf, verse 27. Okay, let's continue reading this declassified FBI document. The disks possess a type of radiant energy or array, which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. They re-enter the or authoric at will. So authoric means you know something that we can see means our um, our realm, and so simply disappear from our vision without trace. The region from which they come is not the astral plane, means the plane that we are in, but corresponds to the locus and tails. Students of Historic matters will understand these terms. They probably cannot be reached by radio, but probably can be by radar. If a signal system can be developed for that apparatus. So the writer is suggesting that they are here 
with us but in a different realm. So our realm does not interact with their realm. Uh, but they have the capability to actually switch to our realm and go back to their own realm. Uh, it's a very hard concept to grasp. Alright, let's switch gear and look at the scripture to see what is the history of these aliens slash jinns that are existing with us. Of God. Iblis is the creation of God. Iblis is a jinn. Iblis is, you know, he's made of fire, which the Quran talks again in several places that he's made of fire. But where did Iblis come from? And were there the likes of Iblis before? So the Mufassim have come to, and again, this is based on those narrations that I talked about earlier. And what Allah Azza wa Jal did is that he created a whole creation of jinns that were on the earth. And this is, you will find in many of the early Mufassirun have commented on this. He created them on the earth. The jinn race we had created before, before Adam. And they lived on earth for 2,000 years. The jinn in these 2,000 years, the jinn are not the smartest. Allah gave the jinn a lot of strength, and Allah gave them a lot of powers, and they could do many things. And the jinn were living on this earth before Adam salam. And there were nations, and there were tribes, and they were living, and they were getting married, and there was descendants and so forth. Uh, hypersonic velocities, low observability, um, positive lift, again, seemingly in, in defying the laws of aerodynamics. Because jinns could fly, see, and jinns could go th to, through, through many of the heavens, they could go up, up and down. They didn't have to stay on the earth. They didn't have to stay on the earth. They could travel up. It was only when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi came that they were that they were trapped within this first universe. This is clear from the Quran. This is in Surah Safat you will find this. In Surah Jinn you will find this. That Allah did not allow them to go beyond the first heaven or the first heaven, meaning the end of this universe. They can't go past that after the after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi became a prophet. But before that, they could go above that. So what happened is that on these travels, Iblis proved himself that he was so close to God. And Allah Azawajal then allowed him to get closer and closer to higher and higher basically. And they say in some of these narrations that there was not, no space in the heavens was left. Like no large space was left in the heaven, but Iblis had gone there and he had worshipped God. So he was a very, very, very close you know, you could say jinn, a servant jinn, whatever however you want to put it, to God. Came here, visited, observed. I will tell you unequivocally that that through the observation, scientific methodologies that were applied to, to look at this phenomena, that these aircraft, we'll call them aircraft, are displaying characteristics that are not currently within the U.S. inventory, nor in any foreign inventory that, that we are aware of. So I know you're using, uh, you're being clear, but I mean, the answer is yes. Um, my personal, I can't speak on behalf of the government. Obviously, okay. I'm, I'm not in the U.S. government anymore. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. Whatever that means. And the jinn race we have created before, before Adam. And they lived on earth for 2,000 years. The jinn in these 2,000 years... The jinn are not the smartest. Allah gave the jinn a lot of strength, and Allah gave them a lot of powers, and they could do many things. And the jinn were living on this earth before Adam alayhi salam. And there were nations, and there were tribes, and they were living, and they were getting married, and there was descendants and so forth. But they were so corrupt on earth. They caused so much corruption. They killed each other, deceived each other, cheated on each other, took, uh, took the rights from each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels to fight them. And this army of the angels fought them and pushed them out of the land and made them live on the islands of the sea. Now the jinns are made of fire and the jinns, one of the things they have inside them, you know, being fiery is that you're, you, you're angry and you're, you're hasty, you're fast, you're very powerful. Now the sifat and the qualities that the jinns have between them is that they are in fights and they are in quabbles and they are in superiority and who can prove who's greater. This is one of the natures of nature of the jinns and they're always in the spirit of challenge. Um, 
Now there are good jinns. Allah has, 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 has said that in Surah Jinn itself. He's talked about two different groups of jinns and he said the Salihun and there's those, those who are pious and those who are not pious. Now the ones that were on the earth were both types and messengers came down. But the messengers in the many numbers were killed by the jinns on the earth. And there was great corruption that, was, that prevailed on the earth. There was great corruption that prevailed on the earth. Now Allah decided that He's going to send the angels down to the earth and to banish the, the, the uh, mutamarridin or those um, jinns that had caused a lot of corruption on the earth. So this group was going to come down and they're going to kill many of these jinns that were just out of control. Iblis volunteered that if he can come with the angels to kill these these corrupted jinns on the earth and Allah gave him permission so he came and they killed a lot of these jinns they left only a few on the earth and from these few again the progeny of the jinns would start the next and the last section that we're gonna look at from this document is very important this section may tell us why this information has been withheld from public and for a good reason too so let's go ahead and read and see what the document says. We give information and warning and can do no more. Let the newcomers be treated with every kindness. Unless the discs are withdrawn, a situation with which our culture and science are incapable of dealing. A heavy responsibility rests upon the few in authority who are able to understand the matter. So, unless the discs are withdrawn, in other words, unless this information are withdrawn, then our culture, our knowledge, our science, our tradition, everything will be in jeopardy. That's what the author of this document is saying. Granted, there may not be any explanation in the scriptures of Torah, Bible, but um, Quran is a little different because Quran actually talks about these entities known as jinn. So I would highly encourage people who are interested to know more about the aliens. Please read the Quran and you will find out about these entities called jinn or whom we are calling today aliens. <laughs>